Okay, I finally got my Aerostar flap and tail dragger conversion finished. I started back in September, didn't really work on it, and I finally got it done. And uh, basically what I did is I took out the long aileron right here. That was about half the width of this. And I created on each, each side of the wing a new spar backplate for the new ailerons, um, which I got. These were pre-made, and I cut them in length, covered them. Then these I carved out of a large block, such as those down there. A lot of work on these wings, a lot more than I anticipated. That's why it took so long. I think it'll turn out pretty good. And then the tail dragger, I got a Dubro 4060 size landing gear. It's pretty heavy. I'm looking uh, for an aluminum copy because it'll probably save a lot of weight. This thing by itself, the wheels weighs a pound, but uh, it absorbs a lot of impact. It's pretty durable. And then I, on the, oh, there goes the servo. Uh, then I put a tail wheel on the back with, and it's steerable too. You can hear it buzzing. And I got a, because the plan is to make this kind of bush plane tower. The wheels are a little small right now, but I'll uh, eventually put a tail hook in the back or right behind the wing so to my dad's sail planes. I got a bigger 14 by 7 prop, or sorry, 13 by 6.5 to uh, for more thrust. You can hear it buzzing right now. Come on. Okay. This, is, uh, this is what I did for the steerable tail wheel. It's a HS82 metal gear with two uh, push rods attached to this Ohio super wheel uh, 40 size or mini size uh, tail wheel and it uh, works very well demonstrated and uh, that, that, that'll make steering on the ground very solid still got my, let me zoom out still got my elevator and rudder okay and then uh, obviously flaps And ailerons, and uh, of course power, motor, motor. So I'll open it up and take a look inside. With everything attached, this is what it looks like inside. Lots of wires because I only have six channels on this one because uh, this dash to use a eight-channel sailplane. So I wire harness the ailerons and flaps. So lots of wires going down to the uh, I think it's the Air 6200. I'll explain more once I get this wing off because it's not much movement right here. Okay, starting from the front, uh, the only thing that's changed up here is a 13 by 615 prop for no more thrust. And then uh, these I got a white harness running back to the tail wheel servo, hooking up to the rudder servo right there and the elevator servo. One of the biggest improvements I made was not much light, but if you see there's a big bunch of pink foam right there that runs all the way back under here as a kind of cushion for the landing gear and a better mount for the battery uh, helps uh, support the wood which has got pretty weak in there then farther back in there's a Turnagee 60 amp plush um, which and then I got the power of the servos and receiver so I'm going to turn this around I got a Castle Creations 10 amp uh, BEC which is spliced into the input connectors where the battery goes. That's how it gets its power. And then it's got a separate uh, receiver wire going into the auxiliary unit. That's how the receiver and servos get power. Otherwise, no uh, no servos have really changed. Here's a close up of the wing. Each of the four servos is just a Futaba standard. S3003, they're new and they're not 20 years old like the other ones in the fuselage. Just a standard push rod to an Allen control horn and a Gibro uh, Easy connector for the ailerons, flaps. Ran out of white covering here, as you see. I just got away with the covering. Um, most of it I put on that Tiger 2 I had back in April, which crashed a month later. I actually gave that away. You might wonder where that what happened. And then all the all the wiring running out right here, um, ailerons and flaps, and then it's still attached by rubber bands. This is where the former single servo bell crank operation was going on. 
and I just removed that. Turned out nice. I'm pretty happy. The uh, top of the wing is nothing's really changed. So let's head to the landing gear. Last thing, the landing gear does attach in the same holes that the floats attach to, which makes it really easy to flip flop. Um, it takes about two minutes to get the floats on, which is nice. And that's pretty much it. I'm hoping to go for a maiden tomorrow, so stay tuned.